and so he was like, and this is like a legend. My uncle has been trying. It's, he's trying to make it sort of like bang bang. He's trying to make it a legend of like the phantom hornblower of Dublin town. Now apparently, apparently they got to like, I think about five people in the phone book. When was the seventies? Probably only five people in the phone book. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, so they used to just ring people up and go, this is the phantom hornblower of Dublin town, and then blow down the phone. And I thought like that just made me like so happy when I was a kid. So. Um, other small story was one time I was really sulky with him in the car. This is why he just makes me so happy. We were in the car and I was really sulky. I can't remember. I was 13, so I was always sulky. But we were in the car and this is my uncle driving, you know, on the N4. And I'm in the passenger seat all like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, And I had a side print. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to side print in an attitude problem and it's just like, <laughs> like you're batting away flies. But anyway, so I was sitting all sulky in, in my big hoodie. And my uncle started, started doing this thing where he'd look, and then as soon as I'd look at him, he'd go, <laughs> And he, he, he has done this to me before, like when we're just sitting somewhere and he gets bored, he just sort of goes, <laughs> And it's, it's massively entertaining to do it to kids because they get freaked out. But I was, and at the time, I, I like, and then finally I laughed, and, like, and he went, oh, thank God. And then, and, but then it was only recently I was recalling this to my mum, and then my mum just went, and this was the first time I thought of it, my mum went, Fran did that to you. Fran did that while he was driving. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, but I never thought of it that way. That charming story became so much more dangerous. <laughs> so, um, so that's the kind of, I think, I just wanted to preface that with like the kind of guy that my uncle Fran is. He also told a story about working in pirate radio, and not working, but being on pirate radio, and they used to broadcast from like a hotel room in Hoth, but they could only broadcast until about six o'clock because then the neon sign on the hotel would come on, and the signal would just drop. <laughs> and, yeah, so, and he has great stories like of, you know, having the record sort of set back, so his, his sign on was like a, a record going backwards or something horrific like that. But anyway, so then eventually, like, Fran, obviously from Dublin, but then he moved down to Roscommon because he married a culture. And, um, and he, works, he, works in, he works in Sligo. And the great thing about him being in the country is that he gets to hear all these amazing stories from the West. Just the West. As in, yeah, wait. Um, great neck of the woods. But anyway, so he heard this story of my uncle lives in Boyle in Roscommon. Um, and, um, and he drives to Sligo every day. And so he knows lots of other people sort of that commute in. And there's one guy that gets the bus from Ballina to Sligo. And the guy who drives the bus from Ballina to Sligo is named Paddy. Now, this is the section of the story that my uncle heard off his friend. And it's getting a bit wuthering how it's sort of there in a bit. So, um, my uncle told us this story about... Now, also, this is also a story featuring Leonard Cohen. Woo! Oh, yeah! So, um, my uncle, like, if people don't know, like, Leonard Cohen did a concert in Lissadell about mm, four years ago at this stage. And it was epic. Uh, I wasn't there. But, <laughs> but my uncle and my other uncle are big fans of... They call him Laughing Ben. And like my, my other uncle, my other uncle um, is mad at Leonard Cohen and bald as an egg. And so my other uncle, Fran, bought him a fedora. So he's not very popular with my auntie. But so this story about Paddy was apparently the guy was this guy. We'll call him Joe. I don't know his real name. He was getting on the bus from Ballina to Sligo, and he notices this little like photo at the top of the bus, like on printed out on paper, like printed from a phone or something. And he's going. Paddy's not Leonard Cohen. Now, just to just to set Leonard, just to set Paddy up a little bit, he's like he's like the quintessential Irish bus driver. Like he's got a cardigan and a slight stoop and giant glasses. And that's sort of and he's from and he's like West and you know I'm gonna insult everybody here with my really bad Western accent and it's gonna stick everywhere. But you know he's, he's that sort of guy and he sort of never stands still like this. This is how you imagine him because I've never seen him. But giant glasses and like a slight turn in his eye and you know bit 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 mad looking. You wouldn't really put him behind the wheel of a car, but a bus. <laughs> <laughs> so they go, Paddy, what's that from? And he goes, Oh, come here, I tell you this. And come here, I tell you is sort of a thing in Sligo that you know it's, it's, it prefaces gossip. It's like it's kind of like come here to me, which is Dublin, but it's like come here, I tell you. And you just go into like a massive story. But anyway, so basically, Paddy drives buses and. Um, so he was he got this call once from the bus depot thingy, whatever, and um, to go to knock and pick up a customer. Now he was supposed to be just discreet about it, like it was sort of and he was to take him to this really posh hotel in the middle of Sligo and not tell anybody. And he went, Okay. So he went to, and there was two buses. There was one for this guy and his daughter, and there was one for like his band and crew and stuff. And so Paddy picked up and it was Leonard Cohen. It was Leonard Cohen. Like, even if you're not really into Leonard Cohen, I think even if you see him, it's kind of like 
Like, he's a bit, he's a bit preeminent, you know, he's sort of, like, he's the man. He was the man. That's, you know, that's how I describe him, anyway. But, so he got on this bus, and with his daughter, Paddy didn't have a clue who he was. He had no idea. I mean, I know some people here are kind of like, eh, they're going, but still, like, it's, it's, it's like a, he's not even a celebrity, he's just... A god. Thank you. <laughs> that was the word. You know, this, and he had the fedora, and he's very sort of, he's very humble, and he's sort of... I was going to say American, but no, he's actually Canadian, but he has this thing, like, he takes his hat off, it shows, and my friends, my friends, you know. He's a very, very cool guy. But Pat, so he meets Paddy. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so they get on the bus, and, he was, and then Paddy is telling the story to Joe, so he's going, and sure, they get on the bus, and I think the young one, I think she fancied me. <laughs> like, the young one, because, because, and he said this because Leonard Cohen's daughter was sort of going to him, would you like a picture with my father? And he was going, <laughs> Fancied me, and so then he was. So I was talking to the fella, and my uncle was saying, "Now talking is like having a chat. Like it'd probably just be like Paddy talked, and then Leonard Cohen went really, and that constituted a conversation. So he was driving along, and then so he goes, "So what are you? What are you doing?" And here I was like, "Oh, I'm, I'm a musician." I think they're both just sitting there going, "Really? I'm, I'm a musician. Oh, you're playing the gig? Oh, you know I drove buses in London." <laughs> Steve Davis, status quo. <laughs> and they're just like, and I imagine that he kind of had his hat off because he's indoors. And he's like, I'm driving along, and they got to the hotel, and finally it was just like, you know, which have a photo? And it's like, oh, fine, I'll get a photo. And so, and so then this great photo was produced of like of Paddy with his arm around Leonard Cohen, like musical legend, and they're both like doing this. <laughs> and so Paddy is going, I love this guy. <laughs> and I just, I just love it because I just think it's, it's the, it's the best reaction I've ever had to somebody meeting someone famous. Because usually when somebody meets someone famous, you sort of go, well, were they nice? Or you know, what were they like? And then people will go, oh, they were a jerk. Or oh, they were lovely. And you're kind of happy when someone was lovely. But like Paddy didn't have a clue who he was. <laughs> and and so then like, then the story sort of returns to, it goes back a layer to um, Joe telling the story to my uncle, and Joe just goes to, they're on the bus when he's telling this, like, and apparently when Paddy's driving, he will just continue to talk to you, and then, like, sometimes you just have to go, Paddy, yes, shut up, at seven in the morning, all right, <laughs> just keep driving the bus, but then they went, Paddy, you, so you, you picked him up, and you were supposed to be discreet, and they were going, oh yeah, oh yeah, don't, don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody, <laughs> and then they went, you just told the whole bus, <laughs> and he was like, I sure no one knows him. <laughs> There was like a little, I think it was like a Yates Hotel or something, because that's the only thing you can name things after in Sligo. And then, like, there were people outside with banners like, Lenny, Lenny, Lenny. And I think it was Paddy's fault. So, so that, was, that was Paddy. And that's my uncle. And I just thought, like, if you're pursuing happiness, then you need to get in some input from Fran, because it's awesome. So, there you go. Thank you.